Almost all automotive brands have promised to stop making cars powered by petrol or diesel and shift completely towards electric cars. Among these are some car makers who have become overly enthusiastic about electric vehicles. For example, Jaguar announced it would become a company dedicated solely to producing fully electric cars by 2025. Alfa Romeo has pledged to be fully electric by 2027. Chrysler set a target of 2028, while Mercedes and Rolls-Royce aim for 2030. Audi committed to becoming a fully electric car maker by 2033. From America to Europe, China to Korea, all car makers are fully committed to electric vehicles, except for Japanese car makers. While we see many electric cars made by luxury car companies like Audi, Toyota, the world's largest car maker, has only one electric car, the BZ4X, which you might not even have heard of. The second largest Japanese car company, Honda, has a similar stance. They too have only three electric cars, all part of their N-Series sold exclusively in China and Europe. Similarly, Nissan offers only a couple of electric cars, and Mitsubishi and Suzuki don't even have one. In fact, Suzuki doesn't even have a plug-in hybrid model as of yet. The behavior of Japanese car makers reminds me of Kodak, one of the world's largest camera makers. When digital cameras became popular, instead of embracing the change, Kodak focused on traditional film cameras and eventually became nearly extinct. The question is, will Japanese companies follow a similar path, or do they have a secret plan that we do not know of? We put a lot of effort into creating these videos, and your subscriptions motivate us. Please consider subscribing to our channel for more content. As I mentioned Kodak, there are differences between it and Japanese brands. Kodak never changed its technology, while Japanese car makers were among the first in the world to produce mass-produced electric cars. Honda launched the Honda EV Plus electric car in 1997, and Toyota introduced the RAV4 in 1994, which gained popularity in Europe and America. However, something happened that caused these Japanese car companies to completely abandon electric cars. While Japanese car companies were launching their electric cars, GM introduced its mass-produced electric car, the EV1. This car was a great success for a first-generation electric car, but it couldn't compete with petrol or diesel cars. The situation took a dramatic turn when GM sold the rights to the NIMH battery to an oil company, which was later acquired by Chevron. Big oil companies like Chevron were interested in batteries because they could control the development of electric cars, ensuring that fossil fuels remained dominant and profits continued to increase. Chevron, as the owner of the battery patent, filed a lawsuit against Toyota, which was making EVs using similar technology. Toyota faced these lawsuits but also filed cases against Panasonic and other battery makers involved in the electric vehicle industry. The situation became so dire that the United States had to destroy unsold EV stock. As a result, both Japanese automakers stopped producing EVs. However, they didn't abandon battery technology altogether. They used it to promote hybrid cars, which combined petrol and electricity. Since they still use petrol, Chevron didn't have a problem. Toyota launched its first mass-produced hybrid car, the Prius, which was a huge success. Today, the Prius's legacy is so significant that Toyota accounts for 60% of hybrid car sales in the United States. The success of hybrid cars made Toyota so confident that they completely stopped producing EVs, as I mentioned earlier. Over time, Toyota's stance on electric cars became increasingly negative to the point of denying their potential as the future of technology. While Toyota's success with hybrids is undeniable, a secret document reveals a more nuanced perspective. Toyota circulated this document to its dealers, hoping the general public would read it. Despite its intended secrecy, the document is now available online. In the document, Toyota provides reasons for not supporting EVs, such as the challenges of charging infrastructure and the high cost of EVs compared to petrol cars. They also highlight the 1 colon 6 colon 90 rule, which states that the rare elements used in one electric car could be used to produce six plug-in hybrids or 90 hybrid cars. This raises concerns about the long-term sustainability of EVs due to the scarcity of these elements. The Japanese government's lack of support for EVs, unlike other countries, can be attributed to these factors. While governments in China, India, America, and Europe offer subsidies for electric cars, Japan provides more subsidies for fuel cell cars and electric cars. Although the Japanese government has pledged to be fully electric by 2035, it includes hybrids in this goal. The Japanese government believes hybrids are the future technology and has no plans to ban them, 
unlike the U.S. and U.K. governments. Given the negative stance of Japanese car companies and their government towards EVs, they have become targets of international environmental organizations. Greenpeace, for example, ranked Toyota, Nissan, and Honda among the worst 10 global auto companies in terms of decarbonization efforts, with Toyota being the worst. The climate group also warned that Japan's GDP could decline if it doesn't adopt EVs, as the automotive sector is a significant contributor to its economy. Japan's reliance on exporting cars could be at risk if other countries ban hybrid cars and ICE cars. To address these concerns, Japanese car makers have started to change their approach towards EVs. While they haven't produced any notable electric cars yet, they have made announcements for the future. Toyota announced plans to launch six new EV models by 2026. Nissan, which already produces electric cars like the Leaf and Aria, committed to selling 100% electric cars in Europe by 2030. Honda introduced its new EV lineup, including the Honda Zero, a fully electric car series that will start production in 2026. Mitsubishi, which previously had no electric cars, announced plans to launch four new electric cars by 2025. Suzuki is also planning to launch the EVX, a fully electric car, in India. These developments indicate that Japanese automakers are being forced to introduce electric cars to the market to remain competitive. After watching this video, you must have understood that Japanese car companies don't have a high opinion of EVs. They are focusing on hydrogen fuel, flex fuel, or other hybrid technologies instead of working directly on EVs. I encourage you to share your views. As a consumer, do you agree with the Japanese approach? Please let me know in the comments. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our channel, liking, sharing, and leaving your comments below. Thank you.